exactly a problem I am thankful to have, and that is having so many clamps. Notice I did not say too many, as obviously there is no such thing. Recently, a local cabinet maker retired and sold me his entire stock of Bessie parallel body clamps. And instead of making a wall mounted system, instead I make this mobile clamp rack so I can wheel all of my clamps to a work surface instead of hauling them a few handfuls at a time. So let's jump into how I made this one. When doing a basic search for clamp racks, I ran across this Infinity Tools video and absolutely loved the simple but effective design using plywood. So I started off by replicating the body style and I have a link to Infinity's plans down below if you're interested in them. I started by drawing those two unique side shapes on a sheet of plywood, then using my track saw to cut them out. These resemble a Erlenmeyer flask where it's wider on bottom and more narrow on the top. And I can tell you now that I've built it that the rack doesn't feel at all top heavy, even whenever it's fully loaded down. The rack, however, does take up two sheets of plywood to complete the build, and you'll notice that I'm using a new assistant in my shop. This is a new panel carrier to hit the market called Hercules Dolly. Instead of woman handling full sheets over to my workbench, I'm now able to set the front end of the sheet on my Hercules dolly, then very easily maneuver the sheet over with no effort at all. You can place a dolly at the front if you need to drive it around items, or place it near the center of the sheet to take more of a load off, or to even give you a good balance point should you want to also use the dolly to help you lift the sheet of plywood. And if you're interested, my friends over at Hercules Dolly have actually given me a 10% off coupon code for the next two weeks to give to you guys. So if you're interested, then use the coupon code APRIL at checkout and you'll get 10% off the Hercules Dolly. After getting both sides and the bottom cut out, I started joining things together using the help of these right angle clamps. Next, I moved the entire thing to the ground to make attaching that center board of plywood easier. I laid it on its side and marked off where the board needed to be placed and then laid down type on original wood glue. I stood the unit up to attach it with screws and even though I had that pencil mark on where the board needed to land, I found it much easier to cut a spacer, clamp it in place and just butt the board up to it and then screw it down. Of course, after getting one side done, I repeated on the other side. Next was more glue, then attaching the front lip to create a bottom shelf. These I screwed in from both the sides, but then I also flipped the unit over and attached it from the bottom. Also, here I took the opportunity to secure the center board in a few places from the bottom as well. Of course, I wanted to make the unit mobile, so next I added in some heavy duty casters, and I definitely recommend investing in some good casters for projects like this. I first beefed up the area where they would be mounted to the rack because it will be hauling around a good bit of weight when it's fully loaded down. And I personally chose to mount these pads on the inside of the unit to avoid adding height to the rack. But if that three quarters of an inch doesn't make a difference to you, these can be added to the bottom side so they aren't as visible. My friend and fellow content creator, Maker Gray, was hanging out with me, so I recruited her to help me test out the rack. <laughs> okay, we'll make it more exciting. I better get out of there before we start throwing knives or something. All right, now is to move on to customizing the unit to really make it functional for me. And this is where things might vary for you because of course everybody's clamp rack is a little bit different. I recommend pulling out every clamp you own, pulling a few dimensions, and then letting that dictate the placement and number of holders to really make the most of the space for you. All of my holders are extremely simple, put together with wood glue and brad nails, then attach to the rack using pocket holes. I didn't use any wood glue when attaching the holders because as my clamp collection changes, I want to have the ability to move things around and reorganize. Since I have so many Bessie K-Body style clamps now, I'm dedicating an entire side of the rack to them. And I sped up the process by batching out the holders by taping the plywood cuts together, then running them through the bandsaw all at the same time. And this creates the triangle support piece on the bottom of the shelves. After drilling in a few pocket holes in each shelf, I attach things with glue and brad nails. To save on space, I am storing all of my really long clamps vertically, but all of my medium sized clamps horizontally. And it's extraordinary how many clamps I was able to jam in doing it this way. It's 44 if you're wondering, on this one side. Once I placed enough shelves to mount all of my clamps of this style, I attached a small lip to the front of each holder to keep the clamps from being able to just slide off when moving the entire rack around. 
Oh, and another tip for you. I discovered that a shelf would hold four clamps if I placed them all facing the same direction. But if I alternated the heads, then I could fit in six clamps on each shelf. So if I need more room in the future, I could consolidate and free up more space along the bottom. All right, now onto the other side. I had a few more extra long K body style clamps, so I first included a similar shelf on this side to house those. But then I started making shelves suited to hold the Rockler Surefoot bar clamps, which since I've never owned K bodies before have been my main go-to clamps for glue ups. So I have quite a bit of them. These clamps are aluminum and very lightweight, so I kept their hanging brackets much simpler and left it as just two shallow triangles with a few pocket holes in them to attach it to that back. Now I have something unique planned for this side of the rack, so I made sure all of these hangers along the top especially would keep the clamps inside the side walls of the rack itself. And I'll get to the reasoning later on, but just note that if you don't want to do any add-ons like me, then you could make these brackets protrude past the side walls and hold many more clamps to fit your collection in. With the leftover room on the side, I started making brackets and placing all of my other clamps, including these Bessie Click clamps and Duo clamps. Moving on to storing my F-style clamps. For this, I took inspiration from my buddy Tyson, who did a really cool three-layer wall-mounted rack for his collection. I started off by switching my blade to a dado stack that matched the thickness of the clamp's neck. By the way, another new thing in my shop I'm absolutely loving are these insert plates from Infinity Tools. Instead of cutting a slot in a new zero clearance insert plate, they make a permanent plate with a slot for a removable insert. Once I cut into a new one, I write directly on that insert what dado size it was for so that I can easily grab for it in the future. I just had to share that because I think it's way too cool of a product. But getting back to cutting in slots equally, you can of course measure across your board and mark off where to cut, then manually move your board along. But I ended up using a really neat new jig put out by Rockler that makes this task a cinch. The jig works so that you can set a metal gauge on the sacrificial fence to match the width of your dado cut. This way, after you cut one slot, you can place that cut on this gauge then it will space out all of your other cuts equally for you. You'll see that I went ahead and stacked two boards together while making these cuts because I wanted two boards, one for the top of the clamps as well as the bottom, or at least that's the case for the, for the larger sizes. To attach these holders, I stuck with a few pocket holes along the bottom and then secured them directly to that center board. Oops, I skipped over those miter clamps. This was a really easy shelf with some holes punched in it to match the diameter of the threads on these clamps. I added in some triangle support wings and then used pocket holes to attach it. Okay, and then finally, the last style of clamp I wanted to hang were these wooden hand screw clamps. These were the easiest as it was just a stub out piece of scrap board that I put some pocket holes into it to attach it. And you can see that I made two different sizes for the three sizes of clamps that I have. And I'll have to play around and see what I end up using this bottom shelf mostly for. But in the meantime, I used it for accessories to gluing. Keep in mind you could stop there on the rack, but I had a few ideas for add-ons just to take the unit a little bit further. First thing was a glue refilling station. If you keep your small glue bottles close to full, then you don't have to squeeze as hard when you're applying. However, going from the gallon jug to the smaller one is always a challenge. But Typon has got our backs now with a new pump to simplify the process. By adding in a shell for my gallon jug to sit on with this pump, I'm thinking I'll not put off filling up my smaller bottles as long as I normally do. Then, on the same thought process, I went ahead and made another shelf for my small glue bottles to be housed in. This next thing was something I was really excited about, but keep in mind that it was an experiment, so I might have to make some small adjustments in the future. What I'm aiming for is to have a glue up rack on my clamp rack, and this will eliminate taking up workbench space whenever I have a small glue up, which is about 90% of my glue ups. I wanted this attachment to be removable, so I came up with a design that incorporated a French cleat. I started off by making these cleats over at the bandsaw, then attaching them to the rack on either end. Now this setup could end up supporting a good bit of weight, so I went ahead and used wood glue on these. 
Next, I cut a border length with a corresponding 45 degree angle cut on the bottom to fit into these cleats. Then I made some dog ears or some standoffs that I would cut and then attach to this board. And these are so I could not only push out a metal rod from the board, but also provide the rod some support across its length. Again, thinking of the weight that it's gonna be holding later. With that looking like it would work, I next started figuring out how to modify these Rockler Surefoot clamps so that I could hang them on this metal rod. Now these clamps already come with two holes punched near the end. I enlarged the last hole to match the size of my rod, then took it to my bandsaw and cut away some material in order to create a hook. I cut in the hook on all of my 24 inch and my 36 inch long clamps. And hopefully now you can see kind of what I'm going for. The glue up rack is removable so I can have it out of the way if needed, but then quickly set it in place when it is needed. Then I can hang my clamps with this hook and I can place the clamps anywhere along this rod. If I have short boards for glue ups, then I can place two really close or four really close together. But then if I have long boards gluing up, then I could go up to four feet wide with my clamp spacing. <laughs> That's so cool. There was still a little bit more to figure out though. Instead of having the clamps hang vertically, I wanted to have them angled out to make not only feeding in the boards easier, but to also push the glue up out away from the rack for dripping glue to miss it. To achieve that, I first cut off that 45 degree angle between the two clates. And this is so I could extend the board down further, make it a little bit taller, so that I could attach another board to push out the clamps, but a little bit further down than where it would currently land on the clamps. I took the rack off to make attaching the board easier, but I didn't use any glue on this piece as again, this is an experiment and I know I'll need to make some adjustments in the future. And voila, that does exactly what I was hoping it would do. I am so excited to play around with this on my next few glue ups. Keep in mind that you can easily build this rack by itself and place it anywhere in your shop that you can place a mating cleat. I went ahead and placed a cleat on my lumber rack so that if I don't want it on my clamp rack for some reason, I have another option for it other than my workbench surface. Okay, last attachment for this Swiss Army clamp rack. Adding in a roll of brown construction paper and a roll of wax paper. It is very handy having a roll of each of these in the shop to protect surfaces from getting gunked up due to painting or finishing or glue. I placed a few dog ears along the top surface, then threaded another length of metal rod through. And these standoffs are attached by pocket holes facing out, so if either roll needs to be replaced in the future, it's a very easy task. Now I'm sure a lot of you will suggest to add a bandsaw blade in order to make tearing off the paper easier. However, I have done this before over on my outfeed table and I can tell you that dragging a blade across the paper is much easier than trying to drag the paper across a stationary knife. But of course, to each their own. Oh, sorry about that, I lied. One more attachment, okay? The glue station takes up one side of the rack, but the other side is still blank. So I went ahead and added a cleat so that whenever I'm not using the glue up rack, I can store it on the clamp rack itself. This keeps it accessible for use, but also keeps it from just leaning up against a wall somewhere, taking up more shop space. Okay, and I'm not lying this time. That really does do it for this clamp rack. I haven't quite figured out where I want to keep it yet, but for now, I think I'll place it over in this corner. I think I want to come back and add a handle to each side, but this thing still rolls great, especially considering how many clamps and accessories are on it. Let's see, did I miss anything? I got all of my clamps off the ground, an onboard glue up rack, a glue up station plus glue bottle storage, then also a construction and wax paper dispenser. That covers a lot of ground. Be sure to check out my website if you'd like a set of plans for this one. And of course, don't forget that I have links to everything that I use down in the description below. I hope that you enjoyed this one because I absolutely loved it. I love things having a home and I love being able to find things easily in the shop. I hope that you have a good week and I will see you very soon. You wanna go for a ride on it? No. Okay. <laughs> you should film it though. I am filming. Ooh, you know what we could do here? You could throw knives at me. Maybe after I practice. Okay. <laughs>